I'm going to call to order this meeting of the Sacramento Metropolitan Air Quality Management District uh, for Thursday, January 22nd, 2015. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll and establish a quorum? Carr? Here. Cruz? Present. Frost? Here. Hansen? Here. Harris? Here. Kennedy? Here. Lai? <coughs> McClashen? Here. Natoli? Peters? Cerna? Here. Starsky? Here. Terry, Warren, we have a quorum. Great, thank you. I'll go ahead and read the statement. This meeting of the Sacramento Metropolitan Air Quality Management District is cablecast live without interruption on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel. This meeting is being closed captioned and will be webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv. Today's meeting replays on Sunday, January 25th at 2 p.m. on Channel 14. Members of the audience wishing to address the board should fill out a speaker identification form located in the back and give it to the clerk. Please speak into the microphone when addressing the board and state your name for the record. Also at this time, please silence your cell phones until the conclusion of today's meeting. Good morning. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, see, Director Cruz, will you do us the honor of leading us in the pledge this morning? Absolutely. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, great. Thank you. Before we uh, hear the um, Air Pollution Control Officer report, <coughs> I want to take a few moments to welcome some uh, new members to this uh, board. Uh, to my left is uh, my good friend and colleague on the Board of Supervisors, Patrick Kennedy. And to my right, we have uh, Larry Carr with the Sacramento City Council and Jeff Harris with the Sacramento City Council. And Steve Lee is not, I don't see him here, so, uh, he, but he's also going to be serving on this board, so we uh, certainly welcome him uh, in absentia. So uh, welcome, and we look forward to working with all the new members. Larry? Yes, thank you. Uh, I too welcome all of the new board members and uh, uh, I know that this board has a lot of technical terms and a lot of complexity to it. Uh, we commit to you, first of all, to get to you with a good solid briefing at your leisure. My uh, board chair, Nancy Abel, is working with your staff to get that scheduled. And then subsequent meetings, uh, if you want them. I also, with some board members, they have wanted me prior to the board meeting to meet with them and go over the agenda. If you want me to do that, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, or if you have a question on any of the agenda items, please call me and I'll get answers uh, to you. Quite often I get calls from board members about agenda items and clarify issues prior to the board meeting for them. So uh, happy to do all of that. Uh, First thing I would like to do uh, as part of my report is uh, it's my pleasure to welcome two members of our staff, two new members. Um, the first is new Jamil uh, Moons. Uh, Jamil uh, is taking over our division manager's position and our administrative division. Um, as you all know, we've had that position uh, unfilled for several years, and Bridget Tolstrup has been filling that, done a great job of, of filling that position for us. But given uh, the fact that at some point in time I'll be retiring, and I bring HR skills to the district through my background, and since uh, the economy's recovering and we felt like we had funding to cover that position now, we wanted to go back and do that. And uh, Jamil has amply given us good reason why we wanted to, to take that action uh, already in the time that she's been here. Uh, she has 25 years as an administrative professional. She has 12 years as a manager in the municipal government. Uh, she comes to us from the city of Sacramento. Some of you may have seen her on the city staff before. She was the division manager for the business and integrated planning division at the city. Uh, the angst that the city uh, has presented toward me, the fact that she left makes me feel really good that we got her on our staff. So, you know, you always hope that people lament the fact that they've left wherever they, they were before. She's a graduate of Cornell in Industrial and Labor Relations and Stanford in uh, Political Science with a master's in, in that. She's multilingual and has had significant overseas experience and her depth of background in many areas in budget, uh, automation, and, and personnel has already had a, a good effect on the district and I think that over the next year or two 
two, you will see some real important upgrades in our capabilities and the way we work uh, based on her experience and ideas and thoughts she brings. So we very much welcome her to the district and are happy to have her on board. Terrific. Welcome. Uh, the second person is Levi Ford. Levi. <coughs> Levi is a, is a new inspector in our district, but he's not a new inspector. Uh, he comes to us with a depth of experience. He's California born, uh, uh, grew up in Pollock Pines in Placerville, and uh, he's a Sac State graduate. I know that would be. Go, go Hornets. <laughs> uh, he has a significant experience in private industry, uh, both in laboratory and environmental and consulting. And then in 2011, he went up and became an inspector at El Dorado County. So he's worked in their air district for a number of years. Uh, so he comes to us with a good experience in inspecting in districts and also some good private experience, too. So we're very happy to have him on board. He's a solid guy. And uh, uh, we, we have a very rigorous uh, interview process and getting him on board and getting through that process. I've told him that that in itself tells him that he's a really excellent person to have here because we, we, we really vet people well. So welcome to, to, to Levi. Good. Uh, the, the second thing I wanted to mention is a couple of sponsorships. Uh, I'm supposed to uh, let the board know. We're sponsoring the Clean Low Carbon Fuel Summit with CalSTART on February 3rd, 2015 and also a uh, conference that the Local Government Commission is putting on, their 24th annual conference for local elected officials, and I'll, I'll mention that a bit more in, in, in some of my later slides. Uh, I would also like to commend uh, Mike Sinkovich. Michael, back here, he's our comptroller. He's a little under the weather, but he wanted to come today until we got the audit report through and the board approved that. So he's available to answer any questions in that regard. Uh, we have again received the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award from the Government Finance Officers Association. We've received that for a number of years, and I think we have a, an excellent budget process. Of course, Jamil is going to take a look at that again with a new set of eyes, and we will learn from her as, as we move forward. So. So um, um, commend uh, Mike for getting that award again, and it just demonstrates, I think if you see the audit report, you will see that that, that is a solid report again coming from our auditor. Um, the last thing I would like to mention is, of course, the board members are aware of the capital, the capital trip that the Chamber of Commerce puts on. Uh, we have been uh, partnering with them for many years on that conference. I am the, uh, uh, I am the, uh, co-chair for the air quality committee on that trip and have been for about 10 years. Uh, we generally will help pay for a couple of our board members who want to be on the air quality team and participate with that air quality team. Uh, so uh, uh, Super, uh, Council Member Mark Cruz has already said he will be going back on Cap to Cap again this year. He's been on our team for several years now and I find as you all will find, those of you who have served on this board for a number of years, that time on the board gives you, you know, you start to learn the complexities of what we do for a living and it really helps and especially when we get back on Cap to Cap you have the opportunity to spend some quality time on issues that are important to the district. So uh, if any of others of you would like to be on on the air quality team, we've we've helped out. Sometimes we'll split. If you want to split between two teams, we'll help share those costs. Uh, so, and also the conference for local elected officials. We have a couple of board members who will be attending that, and some other regional members. I think the Sacramento region will be well represented at that conference, and I think it's going to be a pretty interesting uh, event. So that's all that I have on my report, and um, I'll pass it back to the chair. Great. Thank you, Larry. Any questions for uh, for Larry? Okay, seeing none. Thank you very much. We are on to uh, item four. Item number four is a motion appointment of chair and vice chair for 2015 through 2016. Okay. Before we uh, entertain nominations, I just want to ask Larry: Is there what's the the kind of the rotation protocol? If there is one. Well, we've uh, put an item in the board. Uh, uh, book so that you can see who has been board members prior to, prior to this and typically it will go this is an informal um, agreement but this is how it's gone for a number of years the board <coughs> chair serves for two years vice chair for two years and uh, it will go county 
uh, city of Sacramento and then uh, incorporated city and it rotates back again so that's been sort of the pattern and this would be uh, the slot uh, uh, council member Steve Cohn of course was our vice chair last year and uh, he is not on the count on the on the board this year so we will need to elect both a chair and a vice chair typically that would be a chairperson from the city of Sacramento and a vice chair from one of the uh, incorporated cities Okay, very good. Um, I'm going to use chair, chair's prerogative here and uh, start first. Uh, I, I've come to know um, Director Hansen um, well over his what last two years now, in, and, before. Uh, and and before, but in elective office, uh, and he's certainly been very um, focused on uh, not just uh, local air quality matters in terms of criteria pollutant reduction, but also. Uh, fair to say, um, also very um, uh, engaged on greenhouse gas emission uh, reduction and other things that are germane to uh, to this board. So with that, I'm going to uh, nominate uh, Director Hansen to serve as chair for uh, 2015 and 2016. Do I have a second? Second. second. It's been seconded by a number of our directors. <laughs> well, pick, pick one. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Congratulations, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Now we'll entertain a nomination for uh, vice chair. Mr. Oh, I, I, I was going to say that I think we, you know, Steve is and was the uh, kind of senior member or something on this board uh, uh, from the city council. So I can, and maybe there's been some other conversations about, but I know that. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, members uh, Frost and Terry and, and Cruz have, you know, from the other three cities have, you know, I think had l the longest tenures. I don't know if, if any of them have any thoughts about it, and maybe Steve's going to weigh in on that. So. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I actually uh, was going to suggest that since I don't think we've had a chair from Rancho in a very long time, that maybe Mr. Terry. <laughs> oh, I was going to suggest somebody else, but okay. <laughs> if I get the short straw. <laughs> because I'm the last one standing, <laughs> then maybe it, it should be you. But um, I don't know if you're interested, but I think it would be good to have, have uh, Rancho uh, in line to take the seat. I'd be happy to I'll second that. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to uh, nominate um, Director Terry for Vice Chair for 2015-16. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Congratulations <laughs> to Donald. Uh, Mr. Incoming chair, do you want me to run the balance of this meeting? Yes. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, we're on to consent matters. We're on to consent matters. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> that would be items 5 through 13. Okay, any uh, director wish to pull any item off consent? Uh, director Antoli. Yeah, I don't want to necessarily pull off consent, but I did have a question on, uh, I believe it's item, item 9, just um, a little bit of the explanation in there. So, like, okay. if we could if just the clerk, leave. clerk could read item 9, please. Item 9 is... Adopt a resolution approving the request for emission reduction credits from the community bank by the County of Sacramento. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Larry, um, on this, the staff report uh, talks about the community bank approval process. And I guess I was kind of curious if you go to page two, uh, about middle of the page, and it talks about uh, the approval and denial process. And I, I just want to know under what premise um, in the second paragraph, since the board may deny any loan request if the denial is in the best interest of the Sacramento Federal Ozone Attainment Area. What's that mean? I, I think it would be unusual for that to be the case, but I think we could have possibly a, pers a company asking for a loan that's had a really bad record with the district as far as compliance. Okay. Or, or maybe we feel that that there were further actions that they should take as a business on their emissions rather than asking for a loan. Uh, maybe there, there could be a number of circumstances that would be related to that. That's what I, I would think. Okay, well, that, and, that helps. Again, that, you're, that's a, a lot less technical explanation, I think, gives an understanding that, again, because you, you, you talk about utilizing discretion, I just was curious if there was some sort of backdrop. You know, it, it's a little bit technical when you say this federal non-attainment area of best interest. And so, basically, you screen the applicant for the loan, and if they have, you know, a good proposal for use of technology to reduce certain uh, pollutants and so forth, then obviously, then in you know, their credit worthy, you're going to, you know, consider issuing a loan. But I think you offered explanation. And then just the other question I had was, um, 
you talk a bit about the, uh, are they siloxanes or siloxanes? How do you say that? Siloxanes. <laughs> Huh? Siloxane. Siloxanes, okay. And so what is it with the, the Kiefer landfill that there's no other best available control technology and so you're, they were, were they in the mix for a loan or? Yeah, this, this uh, request is for Kiefer landfill okay. and siloxanes are in the landfill gas and they uh, can contribute to fouling of catalysts that are used to reduce emissions from combustion sources. Um, and so that's why that particular technology isn't viable at Kiefer at this time. Okay, so it's not viable. Not viable. Not viable. So we're not issuing a loan. Well, we would issue the loan, but we wouldn't add the additional condition to require them to add a catalyst to their existing oh, okay. devices. Okay. Got it. Thank you very much. Thank sure. you, Chair. Thank you. Okay, uh, Director McGlashan. Item five. Then. Okay. I have a, a question on item twelve. Item number 12 is receive a quarterly report on certain contracts executed by the Air Pollution Control Officer under the General Contracting Authority. My question uh, relates to the contract for legislative lobbying services. It's $50,000 a year, but it's a two-year contract, so the total is $100,000. So I wasn't sure that that really met the intent of our um, uh, policy uh, regarding uh, contracts executed without coming to the board? The, the, the answer to that is we, we certainly anticipate that question and in our contracts, if we have multi-year contracts, we have a statement in there that says if funding isn't provided, then the, you know, it gives us the political co or the contract cover not to renew that contract or extend it if the board doesn't approve that in the future. So, but Kathy, we wouldn't you approve it because it wouldn't come to us. <laughs> well, in, in, in any case, I would put that in the contract, period, because we, we want to protect the board. Even if the board, for example, we may lose funding and then not be able to support legislation, and even if it's a contract under my authority, I still want to have the ability to say we can't renew this contract for a year. So. Regardless of whether it's coming to the board or not, we would have a contract clause, and we do have clauses that say, if we don't have funding approved, or maybe the federal government stops providing Title V funding, we never know what might happen. If we don't have funding to cover this contract, then it's, it wouldn't extend into the following year. So we can terminate the contract based on lack of funding. And we protect ourselves and the board in that way. Thank you. I can't believe that. If that's on item 12, Director Starsky had a question, a comment on item 5. Yeah, read that, please. Item yeah. 5, um, recommendation for appointment of two hearing board members, medical professional and legal professional. The, um, I was just wanted to have the board consider our current incumbent as a legal professional was current, called me and advised me she was in trial at the time of the um, application process and wasn't able to get it in. I'd asked us to reconsider our incumbent. The only other applicant you have is a current inactive member of the bar. Um, you, the, the position requires that it be an active member of the bar, and so I know we didn't have any other apps. She said she's willing to serve again if, it, if it's at the board's pleasure, but she just hadn't had the opportunity to turn in her application at the time. So. <coughs> Kathy, I have a question. Sure. Uh, Director Hanson, then. Well, we'll actually, I, I'm happy to wait if, okay. if you want. Kathy, to you want to chime in? Um, it's up to the discretion of the board. Um, we had, we did advertise the position, so if we reopen it, we probably should re-advertise it, which we can do. Um, and just for the board's information, we don't. We would still have a quorum on the hearing board, so it would be we can wait until February or, or after that if we need to to appoint the remaining member. I would ask you though to report uh, appoint the the medical member. I think is the other position. Okay, Director Hanson. Uh, as an active attorney, uh, d does the um, requirement uh, for this position <coughs> mean that somebody has to be active, or can they be an inactive? Um, uh, attorney as well. The statute's silent on that. It just says a member of the um, of the uh, legal profession, so accepted to the board to the um, California State Bar. So he's an accepted member. Yeah. So he's just an would inactive count. status. Inactive would count. Um, I, I'm okay with reopening it, but as an attorney who has to do MCLE and deadlines are very important, I'm I'm less uh, willing to 
make an exception for somebody who just missed a deadline because they were busy. Because as, as an attorney, that that usually doesn't cut the muster. <coughs> but um, I'm, I, I would be okay if the board wanted to do that. But I'm doing my MCLE right now and considering going inactive. And so this is a big this is a big conversation. But attorneys have to make deadlines and whether they're in trial or not. Okay. Uh, Director Starsky, do you want to pull five then and make a most separate motion on that and we can uh, sure. consider the balance of the consent? Sure. I'll uh, modify the, uh, well, just for, to respond to that, this person sure. has been serving us um, on this board, um, has never missed the only meeting because of the trial, um, but has been serving us admirably for a long period of time. I think trial, all of us that don't have full-time jobs on these city council positions have other jobs. Um, yeah, that's not, I don't consider that to be missing a deadline. That's simply doing our job that pays our bills. She's an um, outstanding attorney that's performed well. Kathy will acknowledge that as well. But for purposes of this motion, I'll move to approve the medical member and ask that we reopen uh, applications for the legal member. Hey, Chair, will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, Aye. abstain. Okay, motion carries. And consideration of the balance of the consent calendar. Any motions? So moved. Second. second. It's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Motion carries. Good. We are on to separate matters. Next item is under separate matters, item number 14. It's a presentation to Phil Cerna for his services chair of the <coughs> AQMD board from 2013 through 2014. <laughs> Okay, I, I get the privilege here of uh, honoring three people who have done yeoman service to this board. Um, the first, I guess, on the list is our uh, chair, and uh, to recognize him for the time that he has spent as, as, our, as, our, as our vice chair and then chair. So if, I, if you could come forward. I would like to. I would like to also say that um, that uh, Supervisor Cerna has also stepped up to be our regional representative on the Air Resources Board. Um, that was a ten-year effort uh, that uh, that former Supervisor and then Assemblyman Dickinson uh, carried and fought for very hard uh, in the in the legislature, and we were finally able to get that approved. And I think that Supervisor Cerna's service on the Air Resources Board has amply proved to them, and I've heard back numerous times from not only the chair but many of the staff, that they are very happy that he's there. Uh, he has represented us well, he does, uh, he's thoughtful, and yet he's uh, there fighting for issues that are important to the Sacramento region, and I think having him there has, been, has made a significant difference in our ability to carry issues that are important to Sacramento uh, as opposed to some other parts of the state, say the Southern California or the Central Valley. So I appreciate both of those. And this is, this is a small award. Thanking you for the time that you have, have spent here. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate and that. Let's, let's get a photograph. Okay. Here. So you're not taking a selfie now. No. <laughs> well, I, I uh, certainly appreciate the um, the words by Larry and um, the recognition. Uh, it's always a little strange, as, as probably some of the veteran members of um, the respective city councils or the board of supervisors can attest. Um, we we electeds uh, tend to get uh, acknowledged like this you know, somewhat frequently. And it's always a little strange for me, um, only because uh, we're only as good as the, the staff behind us, quite frankly. And um, to make informed decisions and uh, to make many of them in a lot of different contexts, whether it be air quality or regional transit or sewer and water, uh, we rely on the expertise of uh, people who have made it their career. They haven't run for political office. They're, they've made it their career to uh, really help inform um, the elected uh, leadership of our community. And so 
uh, every time and any time uh, I receive something like this, I always want to use the opportunity to point out that we have an exceptional uh, staff and all the boards and commissions that we serve on here on the uh, Sacramento uh, Metropolitan Air Quality Management District. I've come to know Larry and his staff to be uh, exceptional. And it's not just what you might see in terms of a staff report that's prepared or uh, oral presentation at a, at a meeting. I can tell you uh, that Larry is uh, extremely engaged uh, uh, in his own right when it comes to greenhouse gas emission reduction and uh, working with our uh, California Air Resources Board. Uh, that may be something that maybe not all of the members of this, this board have uh, the opportunity to see as frequently as I do, but I can tell you that uh, he and I stay in constant communication about uh, not just what's going on here in uh, Sacramento, but certainly um, in the region and across the state. So again, thank you very much, uh, Larry, and the rest of the staff uh, from the uh, Sacramento Metropol Metropolitan Air Quality Management District for this, uh, this acknowledgement. Thanks. talk about long service um, all of our elected officials uh, know how hard this this the job that you do is and I've told you many times that I'm very happy to be staff supporting you I see what you do for a living I respect that I'll work very hard to support you I could not do your jobs it's extremely difficult to be on 24 7 and to be representing your your uh, jurisdictions uh, like you do uh, the two members that we're going to honor now are both people with long service in the public. Both of them have had many, many years of, of, uh, of work. The first is, uh, is uh, Council Member Steve Kahn. And he has been on our board probably the longest serving member here, you think? I, I don't know, know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it felt like it. <laughs> <laughs> no. and, and with, and with not, not only his experience in, in the city council in Sacramento, but also his work at SMUD for many years in, as, as, their, as one of their head lawyer and the effort that he's put into, uh, into SMUD, the community, clean energy, uh, transportation, the boards that he served on, all that experience put together made him so qualified to represent us at the Air District, but also to integrate all those pieces across all those different kinds of, 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 uh, of multimedia and make each of those better. And uh, certainly he provided us excellent guidance and wisdom and uh, as he was on our board, uh, he was a person I could go to and vet issues with and see how they might play out. Uh, and he always gave me good advice and, and, and good counsel in that way. So I very much appreciate the service that he's done here. We're, we have lost a, a real asset to this board and to, and to the community, but I know that he has many other things in his future that he will be working on. Thank you so much for the, well, thank for, you. For the service here with us. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I know you want to say a few words. Well, uh, Larry, thank you so much for those kind words, and I I must uh, say I completely agree with uh, Chair Serna's comments about uh, this professional staff here. Uh, uh, just <coughs> top-notch, uh, dedicated professionals that really have done so much. And, and uh, the results are out there, even on a foggy day in the middle of winter. Uh, our efforts have uh, really helped clean our air in our region. So uh, thank you again. It's always a pleasure to see my colleagues from the board. And I do want to recognize and congratulate the new members here. I see uh, Director Carr, Director Lee, Director Harris, Director Kennedy didn't feel quite so new since we knew he was elected a long time ago. But, uh, but uh, congratulations, uh, all of you I know will uh, bring uh, uh, a lot to this board and, and to the councils you uh, serve on. I didn't know that you got a new member replacing Mr. Hansen, but 
to this bearded version. Uh, uh, I hadn't seen him since the holidays. So, uh, at any rate, uh, uh, it looks like he, he's trying to look a little older, being always being the youngest uh, member of the body here. I think. At any rate, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And you know, Jimmy and I came down even. You know, though we should be out golfing, but uh, <laughs> we're both here. Congratulations, Jim. <coughs> Thank you. I just played. And and the next person is another long-serving uh, community leader. Uh, I have to when I started. Uh, I went back and did a little research so that I would know uh, what, what all I should be saying up here. And I had to re put paper back in my printer because it just was printing out all the information. You have done so much in your life and you served at mayor and, and all the commissions and other things that you've done and also as a, as a supervisor and your time on this board, of course. Uh, it's just uh, amazing to see that kind of a resume and to see how much of your life you've been willing to dedicate to the work that the public's work here and taking care of the air quality and we appreciate the time on the board all of your wisdom and thoughts and and ideas over the years and uh, we wanted to recognize you with this plaque and thank you so much for that time thank you and I'll give you a chance to say a word and we'll get a photo okay well thank you Larry it's uh, certainly been my enjoyment serving on all these different commissions all I can say is that over the 20 years uh, I think I've learned a little bit about what local government's all about, <laughs> uh, including air quality, by the way. It's, uh, many people have asked me, will I miss it? You know, I miss all of you people. That's what I miss. I don't miss the issues. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one thing I, I do is, you know, I spend a lot of time now watching CNN, Bloomberg, and uh, football basketball but every now and then I'll click on the channel 14 just to see what you people are doing <laughs> <laughs> so it, I do miss you a little bit it's, uh, it's, uh, so what am I gonna do well I started golfing yesterday <laughs> Wednesday so I'll be playing a lot more golf at the same time I already bought my fishing license <laughs> so those are the two things and uh, other than taking my wife to some of her appointments. But uh, let me just say this much as uh, I appreciate working with all of you. Congratulations to Mr. Lee, Mr. Carr, and my successor over there. It's, uh, you're gonna enjoy all of this. It's uh, local government is where, you know, the, the uh, everything happens. You're dealing with one-on-one -on -one with the people. When you move up to the state, level, federal level, you don't get that same reaction between local government and the people you serve. So again, I just want to say thank you for letting me serve on all this. Thank you for getting to know all of you and hope Happy New Year's to all of you. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks to uh, uh, council, uh, former councilman uh, Steve Cohn and uh, former uh, member of the Board of Supervisors Jimmy Yee and both directors of this um, this uh, board for their service. Yeah, awesome. We are on to item number hearing. 17. Uh, receive a oh, report. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no. Go ahead. You're, you're right. <laughs> okay. I'm wrong. Item number 17, receive a report from the Executive Director, Air Pollution Control Officer on District Projected Activities in 2015 and beyond. Uh, it's this time of the year, and particularly since we have so many new board members, I wanted to spend a little time covering uh, sort of the state of the air 
and uh, the state of air quality and to cover some of the issues that are occurring right now and then some of the issues that are, uh, are coming up over this year. And if they can get that narrowed back down a little bit. Okay, there you go. And all the board members have this as part of your, there, yeah, that's good. The first thing I'll talk about is uh, federal EPA. Uh, one of the important things that this district does is we represent that local perspective with the state of California and with federal EPA. Uniquely in the air quality community, I'm able to sit and work with the Air Resources Board, uh, board their executive officer, we meet with him monthly through CAPCOA and also to meet with the leadership at EPA through our National Air Association personally, regularly at meetings and talk about issues that are important, issues that you as my board members have told me we should be advocating for at that level. And at the, at the federal EPA, there's a number of issues this year. First of all is our existing national ambient air quality standard. Our plan is due in 2016, and our staff is working hard to put together our plan. As many of you know, we're a federal non-attainment area for ozone. That is a very difficult pollution, pollutant to reduce, and we'll be back to you over many times talking about that particular issue. We have a plan against the 75 part per, part per million standard that's due in 2016, and our staff will be working with other agencies and other districts in the region on that topic over the next year and a half. Uh, there's also a new federal standard. The federal government has to review standards every five years and see if they're health protective. They've determined that ozone level is not, so they are putting forth a new standard. The final is due October the 1st, 2015, this year, under federal court order to, to accomplish that. And we have been in extensive discussions with EPA for a couple of years, and we'll finalize those discussions this year about where that standard should come down, but more importantly, about how they should implement that standard. And a lot of the work I do at the national level is about that particular issue and also particulates. Uh, they also have another rule uh, about uh, existing power plants. That's a greenhouse gas rule that requires every state in the nation to do a plan on how they're going to control emissions from power plants. Very complex. The state of California will be, is working and we have been working with them on their development of a rule for California. But this rule will allow California to take credit for all the work we've done on greenhouse gases over the last 10 years or so. So what we will be able to do is to some degree level the playing field nationally through this particular rule. And we are working closely with ARB to ensure that local district interest and in how they implement that rule are protected. Uh, the, uh, as you well know, uh, with uh, uh, Congress now having Republican majorities in both the House and the Senate, uh, there, is, uh, there will be a lot of pushback against EPA over this year. And one of the efforts we will take and one of the issues on cap to cap will be that we will go back and remind our elected officials in Washington <coughs> from our region that while there are issues with EPA, one of the things we want them to stay the course on is to continue funding programs that they're <coughs> requiring local communities to do. And we have about $500,000 in, in direct grants and, and $500,000 in monitoring grants that we get from the federal government every year. We want to ensure that they continue to fund the programs that they've required us to do here in, in the Sacramento region. And uh, there, uh, a final thing is a new source performance standard for residential wood heaters. I think the, the last rule that they did on this was 1992 or something. Um, this is really important to us because what this would do is require new uh, wood heaters that are sold to be a, a higher standard. Really, w most of the heaters that are sold in the United States are already at this higher standard, and it would ensure that we would now, people would, that businesses would not be able to sell the very cheapest and poorly constructed heaters. What that would do for us is in our region, the baseline would be raised up, and it's really important for us that EPA finalize this, and we've been working with them for a number of years on that. Then at the state of California, we have a whole range of issues that we work on. First of all is cap and trade funding, and I'll talk about that a bit more in subsequent slides. 
Um, in this current year, the Air Resources Board will add to their list of of climate pollutants, what's called short-lived climate forcers. That was a bill in the legislature and they've committed to do that this year. The important thing for us is that black carbon will be added to that list. Since wood stoves emit black carbon, we should, after the end of this year, be, be able to go into cap and trade funding and help get money for our incentive programs for wood stoves, which comes directly back to your community members and helps them change out the older stoves. So that will be an important effort at the Air Resources Board. Uh, they're developing a statewide freight plan. We will be involved to ensure that that plan not only covers the most polluted parts of the state, San Joaquin and Los Angeles, but also is accessible funding and, and technology is accessible by the Sacramento region. Uh, we've talked to the board before about the new risk management guidelines that are coming forth and I will have further discussions over the next year with the board about that. This is really important because these new standards will increase the calculated risk at sources. It's a, it's a, it's a new number and overlaid over our existing processes which have been in place many years, this will have an apparent increase in the risk from all the industrial sources that we have. So we're working hard to try to ensure that that new standard doesn't unfairly impact our business community and the sources that we have in the state that are already doing their best available control technology. So more, more information on that coming up. And then we will have a bill in the legislature between the CAPCOA and the uh, Air Resources Board that will ch amend the language for our Moyer and 923 funding, which is a, a, a major funding source for incentive programs in the Sacramento region. Uh, we have had programs that have put forth over $230 million since the late 1990s to our business community to help them upgrade equipment. And this bill will help us to change some of the parameters in one of the, a couple of the key funding streams so that we have more flexibility to use that money in the region. I also wanted to talk about some of our key partnerships. I've spoken about our national work with the National Association of Clean Air Agencies. Um, I sit on there, I'm a co-chair of the Global Army Committee there and I have been president of that organization in the past. We work with federal EPA and other agencies and they are our key direct, key advocate for local issues in Washington, D.C. The California Air Pollution Control Officers, there's 35 air districts in California. The five large districts of which we are one get a permanent seat on that board. We meet monthly with the Air Resources Board and more often with the staff and other people. And this is our key agency for interactions with the state and other state agencies. Locally, Sacramento Area Council of Governments, uh, they're developing their Metropolitan Transportation Plan. They do this every four to five years. We work very closely with them during that process. Uh, we'll be back to the board with a report on the regional bike share system. We have about $4 million in hand to apply against the infrastructure there. I am happy to say that some major pieces have fallen into place over the last couple of months. SACOG has agreed to be the project manager connected with the, with the uh, federal government funding that we're getting. City of Sacramento has stepped up and is doing the environmental studies. And we are, will be hiring a contractor over the next couple of weeks to work with our, our operational funding. Uh, the Sacramento region, the Chamber of Commerce, of course, the capital, capital trip and study missions, we participate in those as many of you do. And then the Capital Region uh, Climate Readiness Collaborative, we are working with a range of agencies, UCD, SACOG, SMUD, PG&E, Valley Vision, the City of Sacramento, uh, on that particular effort. And then three other things, uh, Clean Air Partnership. Uh, this is an organization that's been in place since the 1980s. It's a collaboration between the Sacramento, uh, Breathe Sacramento Immigrant Trails and the Metro Chamber. And Valley Vision is the managing partner there. And then our work with the local government commission with our uh, officials dinners that many of you attend, other events such as the new partners for smart growth that we have a couple of board members attending, and the annual conference for local elected officials that some of our board members are also attending. 
and we were able to get seven Civic Spark members. These are graduate <coughs> students that are working uh, in Sacramento region. It's a leveraging of about a, a four to one for the money that we put in. They're doing programs with SACOG, with ourselves, and with the Cool Davis Foundation. So that was a, a very good leveraging of funding that we had. Now into our district uh, administration and operations. Our budget development is underway. We anticipate bringing you a solid budget. Uh, we will meet with the budget and personnel committee over the next couple of months. We will uh, nominate that committee next month. And we meet twice with the board to approve the budget. And I'm going to alert the board that we're going to try to hold a meeting in April. The meeting in April is the Thursday after the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Cap to Cap. And we're hoping we can get a quorum to hold our first budget meeting so we can hold our second budget meeting in May and then get a budget approved before the end of the fiscal year. Because June is typically a very hard month to get a quorum because the county is dark at that time. So that's our goal right now. We'll have to see how the board members, how the times work out. And we'll be checking back with you to try to ensure we have a quorum at the April meeting so we can get that first budget hearing in. Uh, we still have some space on uh, 777 12th Street, which is our, our building that we own. Uh, on the second floor, we're still looking for tenants. Uh, as you well know, tenants in the central city, uh, there's a lot of vacancies, and we're hopeful that we're, we've had lots of people look through it, but we haven't had any takers yet. So we're still working on filling those spaces there. So if you have somebody, a business that you know about that's here in Sacramento that's looking for space, send them our way, and we'll see what we can work out with them. Um, special briefing topics. Uh, I've got j five items here I'm going to cover are cap to cap trading, uh, air monitoring, uh, the air quality since January 1st, uh, stationary source workload, and then some grant activity and mobile sources. So I'll cover those in the next slides. As, as you all know, cap, the cap and trade funding was provided in the budget this year, $832 million to 12 different agencies, and some of that money is going to end up here in Sacramento. And we've been working hard with the piece of the money at the Air Resources Board that we can access. And uh, this is a very important program because what this might do over many years is bring in in the neighborhood of 10 to 20 million dollars, maybe more into the Sacramento region for programs that you all want to do or have already approved. And uh, we're working very hard to ensure that Sacramento region gets the fair share of that money. The first piece of the money is allocated in a lot of those areas in by a program called Cal and Virus Screen, which identifies the 25 top 25, top 25% of disadvantaged communities in the state. This is the map of Calenvira Screen for this, for the funding cycle that's in play right now and probably the funding cycle next year. So 10% uh, of the money has to be spent in these areas and 25% in support of these areas. So a lot of the funding streams, because none, none of the money for the bullet train can be charged against this, higher levels, all the ERB money that we can access this year has to be spent, in the, for example, in these areas. So this is uh, an ongoing issue that we'll be coming back to the board and briefing you on as, as, as time goes on. Larry, before you leave that sure. slide, um, I know that uh, last year there was kind of a, a chorus of concern, not just from um, uh, this community, but others about the resolution of the Cal Enviro screen tool. Uh, in other words, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, <coughs> Cal EPA was originally looking at larger <coughs> swaths of geography. Uh, I believe it was zip code. And it was... Uh, Went to census tracts. Yeah, it was paired down to census tracts, which, I, which I, I think was the wise thing to do because we were looking, when we were looking at zip codes, you were actually <laughs> looking at zip codes that had uh, some certainly disadvantaged communities in them, but they also, um, because wealth doesn't necessarily just follow zip codes, had some, some more affluent areas. And so uh, what we see in front of us here on this map now uh, is uh, reflective of, of that finer resolution, correct? 
Yes. Okay. This is and because the Secretary Rodriguez made the decision to go instead of 20 percent, he went to 25. That fleshed out some of the areas here better for us and gave us some more contiguous um, connections here in the Sacramento area. I think we have some very viable projects that we have or are moving forward with. Uh, we're working very hard to ensure that our projects fit into the parameters of the Air Resources Board. Um, uh, uh, rules and regulations that they're passing, and I'm sure I know that SACOG, Sacramento Tree Foundation, SMUD, and many other agencies in the region are looking at particular funding streams. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> yeah, Director and Foley. Larry, on that, um, are eligible projects, do they include some of your, we have this discussion about complete streets, but your streetscapes, you've got, you know, when I look at the South Sacramento neighborhoods there, you've got, you know, older existing infrastructure a lot of times uh, incomplete um, sidewalks lack of bike lanes and so forth will this you know i heard some of the partners you mentioned and obviously you get into energy and shading and so forth but what about as it relates to improvements for the areas where the public would travel whether they be trails or adjacent to roadways or sidewalk areas because there's some significant gaps in some of those neighborhoods and it seemed to me you can encourage you know, <coughs> mobility, but also obviously air quality. People could have other ways to get around. So, uh, will those be eligible types of projects? You'd probably have to ask SACOG. We've been working with them. Uh, the, the funding for most of those kinds of projects will come through the m funding that's available to SACOG through the Strategic Growth Council. They just approved their their uh, uh, package earlier this week. And we're still analyzing that. Uh, SACOG and the COGS, and with our support and another range of agencies, tried very hard to get that $100 million overlaid over the, the uh, uh, transportation plans and the sustainable community strategies that had already been passed by the, all the COGS around the state. So in each of the areas, in SCAG and in SANDAG, you had a sustainable community strategy that had been vetted, publicly announced, really worked hard on, and had to meet a certain greenhouse gas target. To the degree that the funding, the final rules allow <clears throat> SACOG to overlay the funding they can get onto that kind of project, then uh, the question you're asking will be helped or hurt, and I'm not sure the answer to that yet. Okay. I will say that, that the money that we can get in our Sacramento region, if it comes in and supports projects that are in the MTP, maybe that frees up money on the other side, and maybe that money would be more available. Well, yeah, so it may expand the, the pool of money and allow sure. you to do things that, you know, uh, would otherwise be short, you know, short on funding. So, okay, thanks. Yeah, so a lot of, an a lot of I'll remember your question. It's certainly <coughs> something we've been concerned about, and uh, I'll try to pass on some information to the board as time goes okay. on about thanks, that. Sir. Thanks, Mr. Chair. The next thing I talk about is, is air monitoring. Of course, we're an air quality management district. We have air monitoring sites across uh, Sacramento County, and there's actually an extensive network across the state and, and the nation. Uh, we have some upgrades. Um, we are putting in, and we'll have this year, a, per, uh, a near road site that's on five near where the rail yards is. That, that's already, that will be constructed over the next uh, couple of months. Uh, I know that uh, former city, city council member Cohn and, and, and myself had a lot of discussions about that. I'm sure I will continue to have discussions with the city about that particular site. Uh, we, the city's happy with what we're doing there now. We're going to replace trailers in Folsom and North Highlands because those trailers are very old and, and there's safety issues with those. Uh, but what those monitors do is they monitor the air quality every day out in the community that you're residents, the people that you're that you represent are encountering. And uh, of course, wood smoke has been an issue that we've all been working with for many years. And I wanted to focus on wood smoke a bit in the next series of slides. But first, I wanted to show a video that was on Fox News. It was an interview. And it really does capsulate some of the issues that we're working with here. I thought they did a very good job of this. So could we, could we queue up that, uh, that, uh, that video? They're gonna, we're gonna see if we can make this work. There we go. That's a lot of good news on there. This is the story that everyone is talking about. Another tornado across Northern California, but Christina, changes are on the way. Yeah, it's not quite as cold as it's been over the past couple of nights, so that is good news. In fact, take a look right now at temperatures. 
You'll see overall we're in the 30s and 40s, so warmer than we've been the past couple of nights. I think we will take that. But a lot of people wanting to get those fireplaces going lately. And you can see for Stockton and Modesto, it's stage one. So unless you have a special fireplace that is exempt, you're not allowed to be burning. And there is no burning allowed right now in Sacramento County. If you're wondering why, it's because of this. This is a look at our air quality at about 6 o'clock tonight. Look at Stockton, unhealthy for sensitive groups in that orange area. And then most spots looking at moderate air quality. This is similar to what we would see during a heat wave in the summer. Dennis Shanahan was out and about tonight, and he found out some people are using their fireplaces anyway. Dennis? Well, Christina, the education part of it is an ongoing effort. This small building you see behind me in the Arden Arcade area is one of several air quality measuring stations around Sacramento County.